Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? CBS Sports today, um, it was Cody Benjamin over at CBS Sports, has a uh, what he termed a free agency mock draft. I thought it was an interesting spin on, on the whole mock draft cycle and everything like that, but it was more about free agents, right? So instead of um, uh, a, an NFL draft or just projects, he did a free agency mock draft. Okay, what free agent might fit best, where, how they'd pick. And um, a couple of stabs, uh, Mike Evans to the Bears. I, I would not be sad at all to see Mike Evans out of Tampa. It feels like that's going to happen. I, I don't know that while Mike Evans is a first ballot Hall of Famer, I don't know if Tampa is going to be willing to extend at the price they'd have to uh, Mike Evans at this point in his career. Just speculation. They say Kirk Cousins to the Patriots. That Now, again, this is a mock draft for free agency. It's a total hypothetical thing, but Cousins to the Patriots would be interesting. I mean, would that solve the Patriots' quarterback issue as opposed to them drafting a quarterback? And... That's fascinating because the Patriots have the third pick, and we're all sitting here wondering what's going to happen with Jaden Daniels. And it, the the general thought is he's going to be one of those first three picks. From a Saints perspective, you want as many quarterbacks and receivers off the board as possible before you pick at 14 because the more that happens, the more likely a really good offensive lineman or maybe a Brock Bowers might fall to you at 14. Um, uh, it was a, a, a Saquon Barkley to the Chargers. That would be interesting if Jim Harbaugh got – got Saquon. Remember, the Giants uh, t franchise tagged Saquon this season, so he played this year under the franchise tag, and there's just the devaluation of run the running back position is so evident and and quite honestly justified. It, there's just no spot on an NFL roster where it's easier to find a replacement than running back. So, um, But for the Saints, it was interesting um, that he noted for New Orleans uh Jadevian Clowney was who he targeted for the Saints. And I think it's it's interesting because and by the way, the format was just like you would you would assume it was, you know, you would have a one through thirty two where, where you would pick. And for the Saints, he had Jadevian Clowney. And I, um maybe that's most interesting to me because we talked about Clowney two years ago uh, intently because New Orleans was pursuing Jadevian Clowney. And ultimately, they, they did not land him, as we know. But it, it, was a, it was a player that made sense for New Orleans a couple of years ago because of their need at the position. And I guess maybe it's interesting because they still have a need there. And, and it's, a, it's a hole they dug themselves in by – Having the, the cap situation they did, COVID hit, the salary cap number went way down because of the lack of revenue from COVID. And so the Saints, who had been, for all intents and purposes, buying on credit, um, saw their, quote unquote, for lack of a better phrase, their salary slash. And so they didn't make as much money uh, to be able to af afford their lifestyle. Um, and as a result, Trey Hendrickson and Marcus Williams, you lost these free agents that you really would have liked to have signed, and now Cam Jordan has gotten older. You have thankfully hit on Carl Granderson, but you took a stab at, at defensive end in the draft with Isaiah Foskey, and he played 10 games for you this year and had no sacks. So hopefully there's a, a high ceiling for Foskey in his future. I don't know that I believe it, but hopefully there there is. So maybe there is a look. At, at a guy like Jadevian Clowney, who spent this year with the Ravens and had nine and a half sacks. I mean, Jadevian Clowney's 31 years old. I know we'd look at Clowney and think of him as, at least I do anyway, uh, as an old player, an older player. And it, I mean, he's been around the NFL for, for more than a decade now, uh, or for a decade. But, you know, this past year, he had 43 tackles, nine and a half sacks, two forced fumbles, uh, four and a half you know, uh, stuffs, I, like, I would gladly, in a millisecond, take that productivity 
from a, a rotational defensive end piece. I'd still think Cam Jordan would be your starter and Carl Granderson would be a starter. But if Clowney came in here, remember, Cam Jordan had two sacks last year, two. Now, Clowney was playing in a much better defense in Baltimore, but that's a guy that if you could get on a one-year mercenary deal that fits that need as opposed to using the 14th pick on a defensive end, you could fill that need, use the 14th overall pick on perhaps your franchise left tackle. That seems more fruitful for the Saints, to me anyway, than targeting a defensive end in the draft. Because you've done that. You drafted Marcus Davenport. You drafted Peyton Turner. Last year, you drafted Isaiah Foskey. And I know what you could say. Hey, look, well, didn't you draft Trevor Penning? Yes, you did. But it doesn't change the fact that your defense is still good. And your offensive line was rated as one of the bottom five offensive lines collectively in the entire NFL this year. So you have got to – it just it doesn't matter where your draft capital was spent before. It doesn't change the fact that your offensive line is bad now. So, you know, with free agency starting before the draft, you kind of have to make that decision. Are you going to go target an, an edge rusher in free agency or are you going to try to target starting offensive line help in free agency? And if not, then whichever you don't do, you have to address in the draft. What I'm saying is I would rather spend a relative bargain on Jadevian Clowney for a year and see if you could make that work as a rotational piece and draft in a draft where you are likely to have a franchise left tackle sitting there at 14. I Like Joe Walt's not going to be there, but Fashanu from Penn State could be. Um, uh, Fuaga, I believe is his name, from Oregon State could be. And if you scout these guys and believe that they could be a franchise left tackle, I would rather draft my franchise left tackle at 14 in, in a, a player that in, an, in any other year would be a surefire top 10 pick, and you have a chance to take him at 14. I'd rather that than draft another edge rusher when I feel like you could address the pass rush in free agency. What you can't do in free agency is address left tackle. Anybody that ha- any team that has a franchise left tackle is not letting their franchise left tackle walk in free agency, ever. Y- you could make a trade in the manner in which Houston did for Laramie Tunsil from Miami, but you're- what assets do the Saints have that they could trade for somebody's franchise left tackle? So replacing Teron Armstead is something the Saints have not been able to do uh, since he left for Miami, and that's something I feel like they have to do. So, yes, if there's an opportunity – to add a play to add Jadevi and Clowney or a player like Jadevi and Clowney as maybe a one year mercenary at defensive end and draft your franchise at left tackle, I would rather that than say drafting Jared Verse. Or, you know, one of the or or I don't know if Dallas Turner's on is on the, the board at fourteen. But if you gave me my pick, would I rather draft a potential franchise left tackle or a franchise edge rusher? I would I would take I would take the left tackle in this draft, and I think there's going to be someone there at 14. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact, and be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.